Today's video, we're going to be looking at the new Quantum Mechanics Star Trek The Original Series. This is the Master Series Khan Noonien Singh 1 6 scale articulated figure. Though Khan sought revenge against Kirk in the fan-favorite sequel, Star Trek The Wrath of Khan, his first appearance, however, was in the original series episode Starseed, which aired February 16th, 1967. This 12-inch tall figure will get his own Star Trek display base. A circular black display base with the classic original series insignia on top here. A adjustable neck on the top as well as your crotch clip on the top there as well. It's the same display base that we've gotten with the Kirk, the McCoy, and the Spock, which works perfectly again for a con being that he came initially from the original series. We flip it on the un the upside down here, and underneath the about the only thing that does change from stand to stand is the different notation that's no that's provided on the underside of the base. So here we have the Quantum Mechanics QMX Master Series Articulated Figure, Khan Noonien Singh from the Star Trek, the original series. Khan, for his outfit, gets himself a red military jumpsuit, which meticulously was researched by the folks over at Quantum Mechanics to match the patterned fabric and color of the original costume. The gold accents are the exact replicas of the original pieces used in the episode. A really fantastic, and I've mentioned this before looking at the Quantum Mechanics pieces, but they really do such a good job when it comes to the tailoring of costumes seen here on the characters. At first glance, it did seem as if the jumpsuit that Khan wore, uh, at least here in figure form, came across a little brighter than it did in the series. I went back and looked at the series again, and I think a lot of the problem comes in the fact that the, especially the fight with Kirk, is in a more darker lit environment, so it doesn't come across as bright as physically in hand here. Uh, and then you've got the belt here with some gold accents with the gold buckle on the front and the hexagonal plates all running around the outer edge or around the whole parameter of the belt. Again, again, some really fantastic looking details here on the front portion of his suit, which then carries over up to the collar where he's got some additional accents there as well. Khan gets a pair of boots, similar to the other releases that we've seen from Quantum Mechanics, utilizing a leather-like material cut in the original style of the footwear worn in the Star Trek original series. On the underside of the sole, or the sole itself on the underside of the boot, is a more kind of denser plastic, but at, up the top here, let me see if I can lift the cuff here, the bottom part of the pants, you can really see, again, the tailoring that they've added to this. A lot of companies, going back to looking at the, the Kirk chair, or the captain's chair, a lot of companies utilizing uh, anything that looks like a, a material would likely go the route of plastic. Quantum Mechanics continues to deliver realistic looks by utilizing real materials, and I think that's the key to why their pieces look as good as they do. About the only thing I would say, though, is by the nature of the footprint that Khan leaves behind, he is at times a little hard to stand. And I did notice this also with the Kirk, specifically, that just because of the way that the boots are, you have to kind of just play around with the standing and the footing of him to get him to properly stand. And of course, there's always the tried and true go-to of the display stand, which a lot of times most collectors will want to go to as well, because it keeps the figures consistent to one another. Looking at the head sculpt, it is super realistic and jaw-droppingly accurate to not only Khan, but of course the actor Ricardo Montalban. Not only is it an authentic likeness of Montauban, but also each one of these heads have been hand-painted. It's the little small touches that I really appreciate, for example, like adding a gloss over top of the eyes, so it does give it a sense of life. And as we get closer and closer as best I can to show you the skin tone, you can see like there's all these individual kind of imperfections and spots on his face. It's not the it's not a completely top to bottom chin a clean presentation, and that's more what makes the figure a little bit more accurate is the fact that you've got these like little freckles and spots in the skin tone here. 
The expression of the figure's face is just about what I would want from Khan. Not really delivering any sort of real expression, but definitely conveying, conveying a sense of power that Khan has in the episode. We spin the figure around and you can see some great sculpting here to the hair, making its way all the way down to the ponytail. And they've added a little, little band in here as well. The hair, I feel, could be slightly a shade darker. But again, looking at the source material, I think it's about the right coloring. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what Quantum does with a Wrath of Khan Khan. Talking the figure's accessories, one of my personal favorites being the crushed phaser here, which he literally just takes out of Kirk's hand and crushes with his own might. It's the same size, or what would have been its same size as the, the phaser that came with the other uh, Star Trek figures. Of course, just been manhandled by Khan. Really fantastic looking sculpt here. I'll show you how that comes into his hands, or at least how he holds it in his hands in a second. The other accessory that he comes included with is the engineering rod, in which Kirk has now pulled out. Khan has explained to him that he is much stronger than Kirk, so Kirk pulls out this engineering rod and, believe, and begins to club Khan with it. This is a great accent piece as well, that if you want to have the two six scale figures pitted against one another, you could have Kirk holding this in his hand as he's battling against Khan. Some really nice detailing here. Though simple in its design, it does have a slightly off-white coloring here and a slightly bluish tinted white on the ends, the hook part, as well as the bottom here. Then he gets himself a series of interchangeable hands. So let's start with the defaulted closed fists. I don't really spend a lot of time on looking at the hands that these figures come with, but you can see there the nails are sculpted in and you've got the little wrinkles on the side where the fists are closed very tightly shut. He also comes then with a series of different just gripping hands. And he's got a, a relaxed palm, for example, and he's got another gripping hand. So he has like two gripping hands for holding. Then he's got two relaxed hands. There's one, the other one is in his the other, uh, the arm socket here. And then he's also got the crushing hand. And let me show you how that comes together with the phaser. So with just a simple swap of a couple of the hands. So I put like the gripping hand on the one side and then I fit the phaser nozzle into the grip. And then on the other side, the more grabbing or crushing hand, I've got it on the handle portion or the back end, I should say, of the phaser. Between the two, it really gives you a neat looking effect. And likely this is gonna be how I'm displaying the six scale figure in my display cabinet. And one last thing, of course, to showcase Khan in the best way we possibly can, we wanna bring in also his nemesis. There he is next to Captain James T. Kirk. We'll just kind of straighten out the feet. And you can see that Khan definitely is taller than Kirk, as he should be. He is taller than him in the episode. And it's really a nice pairing between the two. But again, the only thing I would say is the struggle with Khan at times is getting him to properly stand. It seems like his footprinting just seems off at times that he does want to topple over. But having the two side by side, or in the case of, of course, incorporating the engineering rod, you can really get some nice dynamic fight scenes happening between the two figures here. For Khan's articulation, his head rotates all the way around and he has a hinge up and down. It seems as if, let me just go ahead and take his head off, that he's got a ball joint right there at the top, of course, that plugs into the socket of the head. And then he's got a secondary ball, do ball joint that attaches to the socket of the neck. Collectively, between those two ball joints, you get a good extra amount of articulation happening from the head. Joints hinge out on the arms, universal joints to be exact, a forward and back, but it gets a little on the tight side because of the nature of his suit. It gets really, really tight and constricting up at the top here. So you can't really move the, you can move the arms out no problem whatsoever, but moving the arm kind of further up than that, you can start feeling the stress starting to develop here. Uh, he does have what appears to be only a single elbow joint, possibly a secondary elbow joint, there may be, I feel like a little notch here and a notch there. So there may be a double bend elbow happening there inside. It's got the rotation in the wrists as well as a hinge back and forth. Upper torso crunch, and actually let me also mention this too. Uh, he does have padding. Not so much up at the torso where his pecs would be, his pectoral muscles, but down further by his stomach, there seems to be some additional padding that uh, that quantum mechanics has added. Not so much from the back, the back feels like it's actually direct against the figure's body, but on the front, he does have the additional padding there. 
for his legs. His legs split outward. That's about as far as you can probably get it. A forward and back motion on the leg. He's got a swivel on the top cut of the thigh. A double hinge on your knee. And then going down to the feet here, once again, even though unfortunately it does at times make a little bit more of a problematic uh, way of displaying him because he just can't seem to stand sometimes on his own, he does have a good range of motion in, of articulation in the leg, also relying on an ankle pivot as well. Now Khan has just been released and he's currently in stock over at Quantum Mechanics website. You can head over there, I'll put the link down below in the video description, and pick this guy up for yourself for a very staggering $149.95. $150 gets you Khan, which is something I really want to set in for a second with you guys as you're watching this video. That a six scale figure company like Quantum is releasing high quality figures, as you've seen right here, for $150. It really goes to show that you can get a good high quality collectible for under a $200 to $300 price point, which is, tends to be the case for a lot of male six scale figures. Khan, I think his head sculpt is beautiful, as beautiful as a Conqueror could be, but I think he really does accent and accentuate your already existing Star Trek collection. I'm very much looking forward to having this guy standing next to uh, James T. Kirk, maybe even having the two of them in some dynamic fight scene uh, in my Detolf shelf. Still, he's a great looking figure and a precursor to what we're gonna be getting with the Star Trek II uh, Wrath of Khan Khan, and of course, the movie series uh, Captain Kirk, which is also a series I'm really, really excited to be picking up. In the meantime though, today we were having a look at the Quantum Mechanics. This was the Star Trek original series, Master Series, and this was Khan. I really wanted to wrap up this video with me yelling con, but I didn't think it would do it justice, so I'll just say con. If you guys wanted to also head out, uh, head back to the channel and check out, I should say, a playlist I've got available for all the previously released Quantum Mechanics Star Trek figures. So maybe if you didn't get a chance to check out my reviews, for example, of Kirk, McCoy, Spock, and Picard, those reviews are available in the Quantum Mechanics Star Trek playlist. I encourage you guys, if you want to head over there, check those out. And let me know in the comments section, not only in this video, but also those previous videos, what you think of these figures. If you guys also haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, make sure you hit that little button down below this video, and you'll never miss a beat when it comes to future videos, both Quantum Mechanics and others. As always, thanks for watching, as you always do, guys. I really so want to... I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Thanks for watching, as you always do, guys. I'll see you next time.